welcome back to Weymouth to the World. Coming up on this episode, Maddie and I watch the start of the Royal Ocean Racing Club 600, a race around the islands, very prestigious. The Warrior gets some new clothes. We've got a new mainsail and a headsail, looking nice and pretty. And Maddie and I have the privilege to be asked to join the Tot Club, a very prestigious club you can only join in Antigua and it's very hard to get into. So uh, join us and see if we actually make the cut. Good morning. Um, for those of you who are into sailing, uh, racing, all the rest of it, uh, Maddie and I, not so much. As you know, I'm brand new into sailing. I don't really know anything about anything. Today is the start of the Caribbean 600. From what I can gather, it's a very important, um, very important race. Uh, so you can see when we were coming into Antigua, there was race boats everywhere. That was a different race that day. Um, so they hold all these races around this time. And uh, yeah, it's the start. So we're gonna, we've got to redo, fill up a gas, go into North Sales to arrange a day when the sails are getting put on. That could be today, I don't know. And then um, we're gonna try and see the start. We're gonna go up near Shirley Heights and try and film the start of the race for you guys, if that's your thing. If that floats your boat, pardon the pun. <laughs> This anchorage is the start of English Harbour. English Harbour holds Nelson's dockyard that you'll see in the distance in a second. Uh, commanded by Horatio Nelson. Um, it's a former British Navy base and it displays restored 18th and 19th century buildings that you would have seen at the end of the last episode. Uh, we have to walk up this track to get a good vantage point to watch the start of the race. And Maddie loves finding pretty little shells. There she is, look at her happy little face. <laughs> Good morning. What? In. Okay guys, I could read some stuff off the internet about racing and make out like I know, but I've already told you I don't. So I'm going to explain from what I can gather and then anyone else who does know about racing or races can leave comments and those of you who want to know what's actually going on, go and read the comments. So this race, it's actually um, in classes. It's not fair for these smaller boats to be racing against these really big, ultra fast multi hulls. So they come out and they kind of mill around for a little while, getting everything ready. Um, and then when their class is ready to race, uh, they, all, they migrate to the correct side of the start line. As you can see, they're all gathering over towards there now. Um, and two minutes before their race, they will get a horn sound and it sounds something like this. And then just before their race starts, they will get a gunshot and a longer horn and it will sound something like this. Okay. So it is at this point that they want to be crossing the line or close to crossing the line. They cannot be over the line before that gunshot happens because they get penalised. We saw in the later class one boat did that. They have to turn around, go back over the line and start again. So from here on out, it is all up to the tactician of what they do. But you can see a lot of these boats as they are flying along, they start heading um, towards land and then tack back out. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, if you wanted to actually see the race, see there's a helicopter flying around. Uh, if you go on U YouTube, as you're already on here, uh, probably, you know, just type in the Rourke 600 Caribbean and you can probably see the whole race. Um, there we go. This last class here with the trimarans were very impressive, very quick. Um, but it was time for Maddie and I to head back down. Um, we had a guy from North Sales coming on the boat to take down the main. As luck would have it, as we were walking back down the hill, the truck from North Sales were going by. So uh, we jumped in along with some other people. <laughs> Another passenger. <laughs> hey, yes, sir, yes, sir. 
Young Andrew was going to have a spot of lunch before we come over to our boats and Maddie and I decided to do the same. We found this really nice little place. Stop for a sandwich and a coffee. Afternoon. Afternoon. Okay, we've got North Sales on board. Yo, yo, yo. yo. Uh, you might recognise him. He picked us up in the truck as we was coming down the hill. <laughs> Saved the day. So what we've done so far, taken both reef lines out. The line for the reefs are actually disgusting and tattered. So while they're at, I may invest in some new ones. We've taken all of the, what were they called again? Mass slides. Mass slides. These are the mass slides and we've taken the thim thimbles, right? Yeah taking the thimbles out um, everything's disconnected uh, the back of the boom with the out haul that's disconnected so we're just going to take the last shackle off now and then that's it we will fold it up on the deck just taking out the buttons there it is It is the next day, um, as you saw young Andrew and I folded up my main cell. They took it into the shop, into the uh, cell loft. So what I'm left with is um, the reef lines. Let me show you. Old reef lines. Now the issue I have, well, let me explain. If uh, any of you don't know what reef lines are for, uh, if, wind starts picking up and you've got a full main up and the full head sail out your boat can become overpowered you start heeling over you start rounding up to the wind um, and it becomes very uncomfortable and dangerous you know too much wind and you could start breaking things on the mast and spreaders and lines etc so what you do is you make the sail smaller both sails smaller um, it's called reefing so most sails will have three reef points you know and as it progressively gets windier uh, you put, you know, the first one, the second one, and the third one. The third one's just a tiny bit of cell. I don't have a third reef, even in this new cell. I was hoping to get deeper reef points to make each reef smaller. However, it's not like that because of the, where the battens sit inside the cell. Um, so the issue that I have was if I reef my main, um, I have, sorry, I have a single line reef system. It's not the best but for me it's great where I you know um, if Maddie's seasick I do a lot of solo sailing if you like I don't have to leave the cockpit to go to the mast to hook the luff of the sail onto the mast and then you pull the leech from the back I can do everything with one line it goes through the luff um, through the boom into the leech up to uh, a reef point on the back and then when I pull that one line it just brings everything down nice and tight I hoist the main again to make the, the luff tight um, I've been having issues when I raise the main after I've reefed. I take the clutches off, clutches being these, as you can see, reef one, reef two. So there's normally lines coming out of this. Release them so that the line can run th through. Um, hoist on the main. And then the reef lines used to, when I first got the boat, just run up with the main. However, after i can't remember maybe a year um it was all getting sticky so when it sticks it, it uh, the electric winch can't pull it up and it's hard and if anything even doing it by hand the boom starts wanting to lift i have to go to the back of the boom and if i got a bit of seas it's it's not safe so i have to try and very forcefully pull the line back out the end of the boom to give it the slack so it can go all the way up so what i've done is i have bought new line I'm going to replace these old salty crusty lines and hopefully that will solve the problem. If you look back at the episode of just before I left 
for the Atlantic. I was in, Gr not Grand Canaria, I'd done it before then. I was in Estepona. I replaced the main halyard. Now the way you do this, I don't want to take these old lines. Hopefully the wind muffler will do its thing. I don't want to take these old lines out of the boot. As you can see, they run down there through the boom and out the back as I showed you before. Now if I take these lines out I've got no way of putting them back through or very very tricky something I don't fancy doing. So uh, the way I done the main cell as you can see it goes into the mo into the boom where the old line ended I sewed the new uh, the new halyard to that end. Um, let me show you. So imagine, if you will, this is my new reef. This is the old one that goes through the boom. You put the ends together, I'll have to cut this off, just excuse that. You put the ends together, like so, and then you sew them. And then when I've sewed them, I'm gonna tape them so that everything gets nice and small. So when it does pass through that little hole that you saw at the, uh, the gooseneck, it should pull and when I start pulling the old one it will pull the new one through. So let's get to it. So you get that as small as you can. Um, and then that will run. This one's gonna be the easy one because uh, I'll show you why in a minute when I do reef two. But this one's got a bigger en entrance at the end of the boom to go through and then out the back. But I'll show you on reef two why I'm really concerned about that one. Okay, so Maddie is pulling the old one out now. And as you can see, it's going through the aperture of the gooseneck. Now what I was talking about with the second reef is it has to go through this tiny hole and I think that's where it tends to get stuck a lot. So in a second you will see the new one come to me as the Maddie takes the old one out the back. So here comes the new line. Nice and gently now and I guide make sure it goes through the roller in there. And then that will go for, all right, stop there, Mads. And I need to have a look down to make sure it goes in the correct roller. That's the new one going through the boom as we speak all the way back to Maddie. And hopefully any second, the new part will pop out the back where she's pulling. And then that's the new line run through. Okay, that's it coming through now, a bit more slack. There you go, keep pulling, keep pulling. There we go. So that's reef line one through. Moment of truth. This hole is super tight, so hopefully. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to go back and get this really tight because it's not gonna go through. I'm gonna ditch the tape and trust the stitches. So that was sketchy. Um, it kept bundling up the old one, so I had to massage it flat, and then this new one was doing the same. So at the moment, the stitches are kind of holding. Um, I just hope that it manages, it's literally about here, around the roller. I just hope it manages to make it to Maddie without those stitches. It's, it's sail cotton, so I'm hoping it's strong, and I put loads of stitches in. So uh, let's, let's hope for the best. Yeah, good. There we go. We got it. <laughs> you may be wondering why is there a massive blue bag in our dinghy? Um, that is my cruising chute. What a cruising chute is, it's like a spinnaker. Um, if you imagine like a big kite on the, uh, as a sail. When it's light winds, very light winds, you can hoist this sail um, and it should give you a few more knots. Well, I've never flown mine. I've got one, I've seen it, never flown it. Don't know how to. Looked at some videos, I think I know how to. I think I know how I'm gonna set it up. But I don't wanna use it without what you call a snuffer. It's like a big sock 
that comes down over so you can just hoist this sock up with the sail inside and as long as you got it rigged correctly when you're ready you pull a line on this snuffer and it it retracts all the way up and then the cruising chute will expand and off you go and then conversely when you you're done you get your boat set up in a certain way where you can use the mainsail to shield it and you pull the line and it snuffs it um, it's a lot safer a lot easier to manage for just maddie and i so um, i've bought one to go with my new sails uh, they've got a loft a lot of space i don't have a lot of space on this boat so they've they've agreed uh, they've allowed me to take that in and get it set up in the loft so let's go do it Okay, so there's my cruising chute. We've laid it out. And this right there, that looks like a massive condom, is the snuffer. So that cruising chute will go inside. And then, when that gets hoisted up the mast, I can then, I'll have lines. This, these two ends would be hanging out the bottom. And when we're ready to deploy, you put on the line, and then that will go up and then this will come out. Yeah. What am I looking for? Holes. Oh, okay, cool. Pick the tool. Mark would be better doing this, he's a bit shorter. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys are here new sails are on we got the big boss man on board as well <laughs> we've got andrew Serious dove <laughs> and young andrew back on as well I would like to say a massive thank you to everybody at North Sales Antigua, Andrew Dove heading the show, uh, young Andrew, the, the service was impeccable. As you can see here, the sales were great, the sales were made, but Andrew spotted that something could have been better, so he made alterations. Um, they came back and they changed a couple of things. Like I say, the service is great, so if anyone's getting any sales made uh, in the Caribbean, be sure to use North Sales in Antigua. Uh, I'm just really looking forward to getting back out to sea and putting up these nice new shiny sails. So that was the main sail taken care of. Now it's time for the head sail to go on. I've got a 130% Genoa. It is a big sail. <laughs> Pulling that up front. So since being in Antigua, we've been invited very kindly by Steve, who we met in St Lucia, to join the Top Club, which is a members only club and you you can only join if you're invited to come along by somebody who's already a member. Um, and you also have to go to seven tot evenings within two weeks and on your sixth you sit a test. Uh, we will get Mike who is one of the founders, got founded in 1991. Um, and it's all based on the tradition of the um, rum rations given out to the Royal Navy. Um, they were all given a little tot of rum um, every evening at 6 p.m. So that's what the Top Club does here. They all gather um, in Nelson Stockyard and at six o'clock, stand in a circle, say 
say any announcements, they go through um, today in naval history and you toast and there's a different toast each evening and you do your tot of rum and it's been really lovely to meet new people and people in the sailing community around here who are part of the club. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly as Maddie says, this uh, is a very prestigious club and it's such an honour to have been asked. You can't just turn up and join. Um, it's actually pretty difficult to get in. You have to be sponsored. You then have to go to these uh, seven tots, well actually an introductory tot and then seven tots. On your fifth tot you get given a crib sheet that you have to learn, which is all the aims of the club. The sixth tot is... Um, your test so you have your tot then you go and have a test you can get examined by Mike or Des the chairman there's a few other examiners providing you pass that you then go to do your seventh tot and call a miss muster at the end of that so the the the, the editing editing of this is sort of a little bit backwards and forwards I didn't want to do a bit at the start when we went to our introduction or our third so what you're gonna see in a second is one of the meetings that was our third tot um, and what we did today will lead on to another thing that the club does which is very good so yeah that is uh that's the plan um you have to do all this in 14 days as maddie explained uh so it, it is pretty tricky and a very good thing about it also is you get to fly a burgey which is the ensign with a swallowtail um it's very pretty uh, so i'm very very much looking forward to that if I pass. I'm not so good with the revising and studying and testing, etc. But anyway, here's some footage so far. So uh, yes, this is the crib sheet of things that you have to learn. I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, not that it's top secret or anything, but uh, battles, Nelson's four major battles. Uh, yeah, the toasts. We eat, every evening we have toasts, a different one for each day, which is a tradition of the Navy also. But hopefully Mike will do a little interview for us um, and he could probably explain it a lot better. And here we go. This was the evening of our third tot. So just before 1800, everybody gathers around um, and it's a great way to remember uh, a nice tradition of doing a shot of rum to signify the end of the working day. We then get to hear uh, naval history on that particular day. Someone reads out the history. And then we will do a shot of rum to a toast, different toast every day. There we go, everyone does the shot. And we give our respect to the Crown. Um, we are very privileged to have been asked to join this club and hopefully we will pass. Good morning. Maddie and I will be going ashore for 9am uh, for something called Keep Fit. And this isn't involving Mr Motivator doing star jumps. What they do, this top club, um, their motto is something along the lines of destroying nature to preserve history and what that means is they choose areas in the local surrounding Falmouth and, and uh, Nelson Harbour, English Harbour sorry and they will go through old overgrown tracks, trails, cutting everything back to um, sometimes expose history. I think a little while ago they um, exposed a monument to the D&Ds, the Devon and Dorset, some of which is kind of close to my heart, being ex-military, ex-army, and being from Dorset. I actually had a friend who served in the Devon and Dorset, so they're now uh, disbanded or amalgamated to be the rifles. So that was a good find. Um, to become a member, you have to do at least one of these. It's Sunday, it's every Sunday, 9 a.m. They meet somewhere and they go and, like I say, just try and um, clear some trails and open things up hoping to find or um, restoring historical uh, places so we will be going just behind me up on this hill there if you look at the tallest tree Maddie and I walked this the other day we're going back up there today that's an old what, what that tallest tree there is an old artillery um, battery um, Hopefully, I didn't take the GoPro stupidly because we didn't really expect to find much, but it was, um, we're gonna go up there again today, which is great. Take some footage of the area and do some um, clearing, which will be fantastic. And then that will qualify us again for hopefully entry into the top club. Uh, what they do is fantastic. You know, so, some of the things, there's signs up around all the trails where they've 
you know, really sort of opened up to tourists and, and just kept everything clean and tidy. It's, it's, it's something special. So yep, Maddie and I are just getting ready. I'll get the dinghy sorted and we are gonna go ashore. So let's go and have a look. Will we need lockers or anything? Um, take a pair or two. Right. Um, it's going to be very hard to do. Yeah. Yeah, the South African. But I think it has to be certain properties, though, doesn't it? Very thorny. So this trail that we are marking and clearing is called Middle Ground. It's in the area of an old Fort Collier and this area that we're stood on right now is an old artillery battery that as you can see overlooks the entrance to Falmouth Bay, um, protecting the bay and in a second you will see the warrior in the distance, just there look, there she is. We really hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as we've enjoyed making it. Antigua is beautiful from what we've seen so far. If you have, please give the video a little thumbs up, give it a like. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell. And then you will find out what happens next week if we make it into this prestigious club. And also find out what has happened to Maddie's head right here. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.